Okay, I think I think things are live, so here we go. Um, time to talk some lacrosse, baby. It's been quite a while. Um, this was supposed to be out maybe like a week or two ago. Um, but I kind of want to let things marinate a little more. I know there's a game coming up tonight between Georgetown and Loyola. Um, and I know um, some things have changed a little bit, but for the most part, we we got a good we got a good set. Um, so the NLL, the National Cross League, you know, keeps on trucking, and the NLL right now, right now, what to watch for really is Georgia, the Swarm. They're in the East. The only spots left are in the East as far as playoff spots go. So you have to watch out for Georgia. They won what seven straight games, which is insane. Like I want, like I was looking at the New York Georgia game from like two or three weeks ago, and I thought this meant nothing at the time. And then Georgia proved me wrong, kept going, and you know done done the good thing and just continue to win and win games. Um, Again, we don't know what the final teams from the East will be. Toronto and Buffalo will duke it out this weekend to see who will be the number one seed. San Diego and Calgary are still fighting for the West one seed. We don't know the seeds in the West at all. and But we do know who will be playing in the quarterfinal home games. Toronto, San Diego will host... The first set on Friday, May the 5th. So if you're watching a lot of lacrosse that night, you know, go ahead. You know, you know, Ivy League semifinals on Friday night. And then, you know, catch up on some NLL after that. I'm probably going to be watching these two quarterfinal games more so than the quarterfinal games on Saturday because Saturday is uh, on May 6th, that Saturday is when Backlash takes place, so I'm going to be prioritizing WWE Backlash, you know, um, you know, and everything like that. Kudos to Mike Panther City Lacrosse Club. Unfortunately, I couldn't go to a game this year. Um, I will go to one next season if the team is still around. More than likely, they will be. I mean, you can't just fold a team after, you know, getting their first playoff seed. And in Colorado, also, is back in the mix for a playoff spot. So Rochester, Georgia, Halifax, and Philadelphia are the teams left fighting for playoff spots. The seeding is up in the air right now. But really, it's all about college lacrosse right now. The world has been taken by a storm between Notre Dame, Duke, and Virginia. They're all trading shots at the top of not just the ACC, but college across in general. Notre Dame right now is the unanimous number one. They only have one loss. It's hard to go undefeated in college cross. The Big Ten, absolute dogfight. Right now, I only see three teams at best. I just don't see it from Rutgers. And I'll talk about, you know, uh, locks and stuff like that in a moment. Now, there is a possibility that the Big East, the Patriot League, and the Ivy League could get two teams in each. Or, you know, all three conferences could have, like, one bid. There is a possibility. And that's just due to how the RPI and the SOS, you know, strike the schedule, how all that goes into it. And the upsets just keep going and going and going and going and going. Chaos being caused each week. You know, that keeps things churning. And the Tawaratan, you know, Brendan O'Neill, Colin Schellenberger, Ty Kurtz, I had to include somebody, you know, from outside, you know, one of the bigger conferences. And Ty Kurtz fits the bill, one of the, one of the best in the country. Had getting goals, getting assists, you know, CJ Kurst. I could have put Gavin Adler here, phenomenal on defense, Cornell, but Kurst has been on fire. And as far as goalies go, you know, they, I have to put a goalie on here. I mean, I like goalies. Um, and Will Mark has been probably one of the best in the game so far this year. But, yeah, definitely a O'Neal Schellenberger type award I see 
in my eyes. Now, my top 20, as it stands right this second, Notre Dame at the top, Duke, Cornell, yes, I have Cornell at number three, Virginia, Johns Hopkins, and these five teams here, these five teams you're going to see on the next slide um, that, I don't, that I don't have Cornell and Johns Hopkins as locks, but these two teams are locks. So after number five, after number five is where it kind of gets kind of iffy. Although six through ten, six through ten of Penn State, Maryland, Georgetown, Army, and Denver, they're all in a very nice position, very nice position to where they could also lock up spots. And again, it's a matter of, you know, things working out. And then 11 through 20, you know, some of these teams are just fighting for bids at this point. Some of these teams I put in here because I just couldn't see the reasoning, like, sub polls had, like, you know, uh, Michigan in. I completely disagree with that assumption of Michigan being in. I don't care if they're riding the Maryland win. They're under 500. I don't think we should be ranking teams under 500. I'm sorry. Uh, and then you have teams like Bryant, Delaware, Jacksonville, Utah, who are, you know, in a position to be in position, you know? And again, you know, the tournament projections, again, these these aren't, this is this slide is not accurate anymore. Um, so the locks are Duke, Notre Dame, Virginia, Johns Hopkins. Johns Hopkins just got locked. Um, and this is just based off of lacrosse reference on that lacrosse reference website, plus myself and the RPI and the SLS. You know, I think Johns Hopkins, they just really – the way I saw it a few weeks ago, they needed like one or two wins, and they got them. Cornell as well. Uh, I was waiting for Cornell Army. Unfortunately, I couldn't watch that game for some reason. I tried to find a good stream for it. Couldn't mind it. Cornell got the W over Army. But, you know, it, it may be something for Army down the line too. Um, you know, so like Cornell – Think they're a lock. Johns Hopkins, a lock. Army, Denver, Villanova, not so much. They're not so much as close to a lock as I think. Um, now, the MAC, the American East, the new Atlantic 10, CAA, ASUN, there'll be, there'll be one bit leagues regardless of what happens. And there's a lot of teams that need help, there's a lot of teams that need wins, like Ohio State, Michigan, and Rutgers. These three teams are one and three. In the Big East, this last week of Big East, I mean not, I mean not Big East, the Big Ten. It's the last week of Big Ten play, and then the Big Ten quarterfinals happen, and somebody needs some wins. Rutgers, especially um, with the wins that they have, not looking as strong as they used to be, and you know Ohio State, and Michigan are under five hundred. They need they need to win the Big Ten tournament, um, and then the Ivy. The, the entire Ivy League, because there's a possibility that the entire Ivy League could be three and three, which is insane. You know, there's like a, a small possibility of that happening, I think. And then you have the rest of the Patriot League contenders like Lehigh, Navy, who's riding a good winning streak themselves, Loyola, who's completely fallen off. And I've said they were frauds after they got trounced by Army. You know, Boston U, you know, those teams, the Patriot League, we'll see. Um, again, you know, the Big East could be one to two. And my most confident is Georgetown and Denver. And then the rest of the ACC, it's North Carolina, Syracuse. Syracuse may have helped themselves. They are going to be over 500. North Carolina, they need to beat Notre Dame. They need to beat Notre Dame. They didn't show up in Syracuse. They really haven't shown up at all in conference play. They really haven't shown up all season, you know, when it matters most. Syracuse either. They haven't shown up, but somehow they keep racking up wins. Both these teams do. And somehow there could be a possibility of all five ACC teams getting in. 
but I doubt it. At least the ACC tournament is coming back. That's good, right? I don't. I don't think. I don't think it matters anything. But I, it's good. It's coming back. Um. Let's see. Oh yeah, games to keep an eye on. So I had to get a lot in here. So Rutgers, Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan on that Friday, and then you have a smorgasbord of Ivy League and you know Johns Hopkins, Maryland, you know North Carolina, Notre Dame twice, you know in like two two to three weeks. So those two teams play twice in three weeks. Um, again, the Big Ten, Big East, Ivy League, and Patriot League tournaments. They're all going to be key, and whatever happens is going to happen. So we will see as the season is coming to a close. So May 7th, we'll be rocking back up in here talking about, you know, what in the world happened with all of this? What in the world happened when it comes to not just the tournament, but the NLL? On the PLL right now, I can't really say too much. Uh, you know, there was that PLL in Japan thing, but I don't really care about all that. Uh, I do not know where the All-Star game will take place. I don't think anybody knows. They're still being kind of transparent about that. We don't know when it will take place. I don't think we even know the day. But the PLL draft is going to be on May 9th. That's good, right? That's that's cool. I don't I don't really care about the I don't really care about drafts all that much. Uh, so, I mean, these rosters are so loaded in the first place. Like, you know, you add one guy to it, and it just makes things even crazier. Again, the PLL is a very balanced league. Like, even, you know, having an under 500 record, oh, that don't even matter because, I mean, eh, I mean, like, almost all the league makes playoffs anyway. And then the schedules have been completely finalized. You know, dates have been set, I think, I will be at the star on either probably more so the 30th than the 29th, unless those games are in the afternoon. But I will be at the star in Frisco. I will be there. I will be there. I'm not I'm not taking no punches. I will be there. Matchups, you know, times. We don't know who's playing who. We don't know what the times are. All that stuff is to be announced. And there's less than 50 days to go until the season. So, tick-tock, tick-tock. As the road and the march to May keeps going, and we head into the PLL season. So, and the World Lacrosse Championships as well. You know, so we keep on transitioning from the spring into the summer of madness because the PLL is absolute madness each and every week. So, until then, I'll see you all. Um, I'll see y'all uh, sometime, you know, on Sunday night. Yeah, it'll be Sunday night, talking indoor arena football and all that insanity. Talk to you 